Okay, welcome everybody. Um, it is snowing out, and we're going to put together a PowerPoint for you. This one's on dissociative disorders. Let me turn the light on. Keep going. Um, so, there are, uh, in class we've been talking about uh, disorders that uh, mostly affect emotion. The next couple topics are going to be disorders that mostly affect thought, um, especially disruptions between thought and experience. Um, the dissociative disorders, which I'm going to talk about in this PowerPoint, and then and that includes dissociative amnesia, fugue, and DID, which used to be called multiple personality disorder. Um, the other Disorder that kind of loosely fits in this category would be schizophrenia, which um, I've done a PowerPoint on, and it's uploaded. And I, you can listen to this one and then that one, and that one's about 27 minutes. Um, okay, so I'll do a little intro, get into the guts of the three types, talk about the causes, and spend a fair amount of time on the controversy, especially with the dissociative identity disorder, and then I've got a, a slide at the end with more materials. Um, so, we, you, me, everybody, we spend time uh, kind of lost in thought or daydreaming. We might enter a room and um, think, why did I come in here? Um, sometimes if you are visiting somewhere else and you wake up in an unfamiliar location, you get momentarily disoriented, not know where you are. Uh, in all of those cases, your thoughts and your experiences are kind of split, or another word for it would be dissociated from the external world. Um, that disconnect is something that everybody experiences. In the dissociative disorders, it's a much more extreme version. So I've talked about that with all the disorders, how um, most of them are things that we experience in a normal, healthy life. Um, this would be the extreme version. Um, the dissociative disorders evolve, involve disruptions in memory, in awareness, and identity. Um, generally, it's thought of due to some sort of extreme stress. Um, that's the kind of... So that... In terms of the big picture to remember, it's, it's those things. Um, the commonality would be the memory, that they're splitting off of memory from some sort of conscious awareness. Three types, like I mentioned, amnesia, fugue, and dissociative identity disorder. Start with dissociative amnesia. Um, that is a woman from Canada named Dorothy Judry. Um, so in dissociative amnesia, it is exactly what you would think. A person forgets either that an event happened or they might lose awareness of a whole block of time. Um, maybe they forget their identity or where the, he or she lives, and it's something that can't be explained by ordinary forgetting or drugs or alcohol. Um, we learned about retrograde amnesia, forgetting something from the past um, in the memory unit. And this is a specific disorder that involves that. Obviously, you can get retrograde amnesia from this, dis this disorder, or you can get it from, say, a concussion or something like that as well. Um, an example would be this woman, Dorothy Judry. Uh, this, in 1995 in Canada, uh, after what was claimed to be years of abuse, she shot her husband six times. Her husband survived. Um, in the trial for attempted murder, uh, he described her shooting as very calm and detached. When police arrived, she was distraught, no memory of the shooting, and told police she simply found her husband shot and lying on the garage floor. She was found um, not criminally responsible because they agreed, uh, or of the defense testimony and psychiatrist that she was experiencing dissociative amnesia due to the abuse. Um, the case is controversial. They were separated, and he was going to visit her um, 
to kind of finalize the divorce. Uh, one version of the story from a, a friend of the man's, the husband, is that um, she knew what she was doing. And they made a bargain while he lay there uh, bleeding on the garage floor um, that if she called 911, he would uh, not implicate her, that he would kind of keep quiet about what actually happened. Um, so that's controversial. It doesn't take away that this disorder exists, but just some of the controversy surrounding it. Dissociative fugue is actually a form of dissociative amnesia, so it's just an um, extreme version. So fugue means flight, and dissociative fugue is the rarest and most extreme form of dissociative amnesia. It involves a loss of identity and travel to some other location. Um, that's the fugue part. Um, and sometimes the assumption of a new identity. Uh, the fugue state often ends suddenly. The person kind of coming to and unsure how he or she ended up in the unfamiliar surroundings. And typically no recall of what happened during the fugue state. So this is a popular uh, plot device for film and TV. Uh, this is, you know, very dramatic. Uh, an example would be Jeff Ingram, who uh, experienced, has experienced three dissociative fugue states in his life. Um, at one time, he was engaged to the woman you see there and fled from Washington State and then kind of um, recovered who he was in Denver. And... Um, actually went on national TV asking for people to tell him who he was, had no idea who he was. Um, he, his fiance saw that and they uh, brought him back to Washington. He had no memory of her, um, but then they eventually married and um, he had a couple more fugue states uh, while they were married and um, now she kind of records what's going on for him because he has this repeated thing. Um, and at, at the end, I'll give you a, a link to a radio show about her or about them. Um, and then we come to the big one, the most dramatic and interesting, uh, dissociative identity disorder that uh, used to be called multiple personality disorder. And it is the occurrence of two or more distinct identities in the same individual, along with memory gaps between them, um, which the person doesn't recall the everyday events. Um, it's very misunderstood in kind of mainstream society. Um, it's generally thought of as someone who has all these personalities like it's an addition. And I think the better way to understand it is it is you have less personality. Your personalities have been fragmented into these different partial personalities. Um, in terms of causes, the it, often the, this fragmentation of personality is believed to result from some sort of extreme stress, uh, often abuse. Um, the person with the dissociative disorder splits off from the traumatic event in order to protect the self. And there is a, a possible connection to PTSD, obviously. Um, the book Sicarelli talks about cognitive and behavioral explanations as well. It doesn't, again, like we talked about in class, that doesn't necessarily explain the cause, but more how the person deals with it. Um, that uh, cognitively someone might want to avoid the painful thinking associated with the trauma, whether it's just too horrible to confront or that there's guilt and shame. Um, and then you get negative reinforcement of that thought avoidance because it makes the... Um, bad feelings about it go away. There's a lot of controversy about DID um, that really started in the 70s with the stories of Sybil. Um, so Sybil is the um, book name, fictional name of Shirley Mason um, and her psychiatrist, I had, actually I think she's a psychologist, Dr. Cornelia Wilbur, um, Wilbur began treating um, Shirley Mason in, I think, the late 60s. And um, the story was eventually made into a book. 
Wilbur, um, instead of taking her study, case study of Mason to, and publishing it in a scientific journal, she chose to write a, a mass market book. Uh, so a woman named Flora Schreiber, her friend, wrote it with her in 73, called Sybil. And then that quickly got made into a huge movie with Sally Field playing the role of Sybil in 1976. The book and the movie were very popular, and um, the idea of multiple personalities sort of kind of exploded into the nation's consciousness. Wilbur's methods, in hindsight, and her diagnosis are, are very suspect. Um, we, I touched on this when I uh, talked about hypnosis. Um, she uh, would hypnotize Mason, and she also used um, sodium pentothal, with, um, which was at that time thought of as truth serum, uh, but it makes you less inhibited. And um, under her questioning was very aggressive and kind of uh, leading. It was not kind of leading, it was leading, where she kind of implanted ideas in Shirley Mason's head. Um, at the end, um, I've got a quick 12-minute video about this case, and it plays some of the tapes, and, and you can see um, what I'm talking about, that it, it's definitely very suggestive. Um, so this case brought a lot of attention to the idea of what was then called multiple personality disorder, but um, not clear that uh, the methods used were, well, clearly the methods were not good, and it's, it's not clear that... Uh, there's not agreement about did she have it or, or um, whether this is the correct diagnosis. Another famous case is Billy Milligan in 1978. He uh, was charged with a series of robberies and rapes and uh, then got acquitted in based on a diagnosis of um, dissociative identity disorder. I think it's the first successful case um, that involved this defense, and his lawyer successfully argued that different personalities had committed the crimes. Um, that's Billy. The, there's a well-known book, uh, pretty well regarded, written after the case by Daniel Keyes called The Minds of Billy Milligan, and it describes Milligan as having 24 separate personalities uh, sharing um, the body of 26-year-old Billy. Um, there's, I'll just, you don't have to know this, but I'll give you a few. There's Arthur, age 22, speaks with a British accent and is self-taught in physics and bio, reads and writes fluent Arabic. David is age eight. He's the keeper of the pain. Anytime something physically painful happens, David experiences it. Um, there was Christine, age three, a dyslexic girl who likes to draw flowers and butterfly. There was Rajan, Age 23, Yugoslavian, speaks with a Slavic accent, reads, writes, and speaks Serbo-Croatian. Um, Rajan is the protector of the family. He acknowledged robbing the victims, but benied, denied raping them. Um, and then another one out of the 24 is Adelana, age 19, lesbian, who writes poetry, cooks, and keeps house for the, uh, all the altars. And she eventually admitted to the rapes, apparently. Milligan spent 10 years in mental hospitals after the uh, trial. In 88, psychiatrists declared that his personalities had merged into one. He was no longer a danger to society. Uh, he was released and reportedly has lived quietly since then. Um, the movie Split is loosely based on uh, his life story. So... Controversy remains. Um, are people with DID faking it? Um, so here's what's known and, and how it's diagnosed. Uh, most people diagnosed with DID are women and report having been severely abused as children. According to the most common theory, uh, the children cope by it by pretending it is happening to someone else. Um, they enter this kind of trance-like state that develops into its own identity. Um, in the trance-like state, they dissociate their mental state from their physical body. Um, eventually, um, these 
trance like this dissociated state can take on its own identity to um, deal with the trauma, like I said, and you can develop different identities to deal with different traumas. Um, a couple other things, I didn't write them on the slide. Often the identities have different, have periods of amnesia. Sometimes only one identity is aware of the others. The diagnosis often occurs when a person has trouble accounting for large chunks of his or her day. Um, just like in the Billy Milligan case, the different identities usually differ very greatly. Um, different genders, different sexual orientation, languages spoken, interests, um, patterns of brain activation. Um, if they're, they do brain imaging of the different alters, um, the actual brain activation can be different. And um, handwriting can differ as well. Um, despite this, many researchers are skeptical about whether DID is a genuine psychiatric disorder or whether it exists at all. Um, it's still listed um, as a category, as a type of disorder in DSM-5, though. Um, some things that make people skeptical. Anytime there's a lot of publicity about multiple dis personality disorder or more recently DID, you get a sharp rise in diagnoses. Why is that? Um, there was a surge of um, diagnoses in the 80s and, and early 90s, and then it there was kind of a pushback against it, and that was a lot of therapists using methods similar to what um, Wilbur used with Sybil or Shirley Mason, the hypnosis and the suggestive questioning. Um, people are very skeptical when a diagnosis is made after someone is accused of a crime, and that happens. Um, so how can we know? There is no objective test for diagnosing um, this disorder or really any of the disorders. Um, Individuals who are faking it tend to report the well-publicized systems, but neglect to mention some of the more subtle symptoms that are very common, like uh, people with the idea often have major uh, episodes of depression or PTSD. Um, those who seem to be faking it are generally indifferent or even proud of the disorder. Those who are truly afflicted seem to be ashamed of it or overwhelmed. So I, I guess... My personal feeling is um, that it makes sense that it's a real disorder, but that that leaves open the possibility that there's still a lot of people who claim to have it who don't. Um, I, like I've said, I've, I found this unit interesting. I think that the DIED stuff is very interesting. So if you want, I gave you a link to some of the background stories of some of the people. Dorothy Judri, I have a short article about her. There's an NPR story about three minutes long about Jeff Ingram. And then I would very much recommend the New York Times video. It's a retro report series on um, Sybil and just the dissociative identity disorder in general. Um, and then there's a quick CNN article about what um, is wrong about the movie Split. None of those things are required. Um, just, you know, what's in this PowerPoint. Although if I were to ask a short answer question about any of these, obviously, the more you know, the better. Okay, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you in class whenever